Okay, and here I am unable to open a can. <laughs> I hope you cut this part. A good knife is nothing without an equally good cutting board to use it on. It's something that every cook should have. Some cooks see the ultimate cutting board as a thick, unbudgeable wood or bamboo board. Others prefer to do their work on a lightweight, no maintenance plastic board. But today we're going to explore both wooden and plastic cutting boards so you can decide which one is right for you. Up first, Lisa with our favorite wooden board. Okay, so let's talk about cutting boards in general. The biggest mistake we see in people's home kitchens is that they're using a cutting board that's just too small. Now, if you're gonna be cutting anything up, this little thing, which is about the size of a piece of copy paper, not big enough. Look at the size of my eight inch chef knife with this board. Anything you cut on this is gonna be rolling off. You're gonna be aggravated. There's just not enough room to do what you need to do. So. This little thing, save that for slicing up a, a wedge of lemon or something for your, for your drink. Get a real cutting board. We tested seven wooden and bamboo heavy duty cutting boards. There are both end and edge grain boards. Edge grain is where the pieces are laid the long way. End grain is where they're standing up, which often people call butcher block. We set a minimum size of 15 by 20 inches because we think that's the minimum size you should have for an all-purpose cutting board in your kitchen. They were priced from about $85 to about $250. And we put them through all kinds of kitchen tests, every kind of thing that we'd normally do with a board. But we also sent them to Autodesk that used this robot arm with a brand new knife and it used the same amount of force and cut 5,000 times on each board. That's because one of the categories we looked at is durability. We want a board that's not gonna get cut to ribbons as you work on it. And also we wanted to look at the effect it had on your knife. You know, a really hard board might damage your knife more than a soft board, but a soft board might get kind of cut up. The other criteria that we looked at was stability. We don't want your board to jump or rock around on your countertop. We want it to stay anchored. We looked at ease of use, you know, and that's also in terms of the weight and how easy it was to pick up. And finally, we looked at cleanup and maintenance. How hard are they to take care of and keep them really performing in your kitchen for years to come? This one has won the last couple of testings. It's made by ProTeak. It's made out of teak wood. It's 18 by 24 inches and that is enough room to really stretch out and do what you gotta do. Especially if you're, you know, we're all trying to eat more vegetables these days. You want room to chop things and not have them bouncing all over the kitchen. So we did a lot of cooking tests on each board. We just wanted to know practical everyday things. One of the things we did was chop herbs. And so I have a bunch of cilantro here and I'm going to cut them on this board. I'm gonna just trim the ends, get rid of those and be able to chop the rest of this very nicely. We wanted to get a feel for how it felt to cut on this board and whether it felt comfortable, whether the knife felt good on the board, because one of the things that's really nice about a wooden board is that knife feel. It feels good on your knife. You're not hitting something hard. You're not hitting something that's really unresponsive. In some ways, wood is kind of responding to your knife. You can feel it not really biting in, but just kind of gently interacting with the knife, and it feels very natural. So personally, I really like that about a wooden cutting board. One of the tests we like to do is to pound chicken breasts on the boards, and this really speaks to not only their durability when you're wailing on them, but also how stable are they? Are they rocking? Are they making it seem more precarious to be pounding this chicken breast? We have our favorite pounder and the chicken breast. I put it between two pieces of cling wrap. It just keeps it a little bit neater, and I'm going to pound it down to about a half inch thickness. So everything in my kitchen is shaking, but this board isn't going anywhere. Also, really the ones that are too high and too thick, we found that you're up here and you don't have the force you need. You need that board to be in a nice position for smaller people like me to have some leverage on the, the pounding. Um, so this was really hitting a sweet spot with a nice height. 
Um, nice and heavy, 15 pounds, doesn't move around, doesn't scoot. You don't need a gripper mat under it or anything else. And when you're pounding it, it's not bowing and flexing like some plastic boards we tested. This is thick, it's going nowhere. We like to use chipotle chilies and adobo. Um, and they create a big staining mess on most cutting boards. So we want to know how badly do they get stained and how hard are they to clean up and get the, the stain off. And that is a big, delicious smelling mess. I'm going to chop it up. Okay, so wow, these are nice and chopped. And I've really smeared that sauce around, cut it right into the board, scrape it all up. <laughs> Here we go. Well, my hands are a little orange. <laughs> the board is. You see a lot of stuff on the internet and there's a lot of rumors about wooden cutting boards being safer or less safe than plastic boards. So we actually did that test. We took boards and we um, sent them to a lab where they coated, covered them with bacteria and watched for a couple of days to see whether some really propagated the bacteria more than others. They washed them all with hot soapy water and checked again. Now here's what we found. None of the boards were worse or better than others. When you wash with hot, soapy water, the bacteria are killed. This board really doesn't show stains as badly as some of the other ones, um, especially some of the plastic ones that are white plastic. You can see this little orange blot on there for much longer than you'd expect. Some of the wooden boards were very pale colored, uh, just a light cream color, and you could see the stain on that. But you know, after a couple of washes, most of the stains are gone. I'm going to take the cutting board over to the sink and give it a good scrub with hot soapy water. You're not just washing one side or just trying to wipe it like it's a counter. You want to get it in the sink, scrub it with hot soapy water, pat it dry, and let it really air dry. Don't let it sit in a pool of water in your drain board or anything like that because wood is a natural material. It will expand where it's wet and then as it dries it contracts and that can cause cracks. It can make boards fail along the glue lines. And we saw that a lot more with end grain boards where the pieces were vertical and stuck together. This is mineral oil. You can buy it in supermarkets and hardware stores. Um, it's, you can drink it. I mean, it says here you can use it as a laxative, but uh, whatever. You don't want to use your olive oil, your vegetable oil on the board. That oil will turn rancid and will create a bad smell. You don't want that. This is what this, you want to use, mineral oil. It will keep the wood in great shape. It will keep it moisturized, just like your own skin. It's a natural substance, so you want to keep moisture in there. The oil helps seal the board a little bit, and it just keeps it nice and resilient. You want to do it about once a month in the beginning, and then you know every six months or so after that, you can tell when you're looking at it if it looks a little dried out. And it's so rewarding to actually put some of this oil on and then wipe it in and you want to get all the sides. You want to do the sides, the top, the bottom, all equally. Um, you don't want you know, to ignore any part of it because that part will dry out. And as you rub that in, it's just, you know, it brings out the beautiful wood. And it's, it's really, it's good for your hands too, as you I sometimes use my hands to rub it in. But you let it sit overnight, you're good to go. And it's a little bit like, you know, having a cast iron pan. I mean, that pan takes a little maintenance, totally worth it. This is old school, and I think old school is pretty cool. Hannah's gonna try to convince you otherwise, she's in her kitchen with a plastic cleaner. All right, so I am here to talk to you about plastic cutting boards. Now, they aren't as gorgeous as wooden cutting boards. We need to get that out of the way. Our coworker Mie, who wrote this review, had a great line in it where she says, this is not one you're gonna be handing down to your grandchildren, but that doesn't mean that there aren't benefits to having a plastic cutting board. They are typically lighter, which makes them easier to maneuver and clean. They are also easier to handle because you don't have to deal with maintenance, like oiling the board and, and whatnot. They are also cheaper, typically, compared to a really gorgeous wooden cutting board. 
They're also lastly dishwasher safe. So you can put the whole thing in the dishwasher and make your cleanup much easier. So they're easier to maintain, easier to clean, easier to lift. They're, they're basically the easier option compared to a wooden cutting board. We tested seven models in our lineup, priced from about 20 bucks to about 70 bucks. This is our winner right here from Winco. It is polypropylene and made with a little bit of polyethylene mixed in there too. It's a plastic cutting board basically. Um, we had a lot of fails and a lot of triumphs in this testing. It was a really interesting testing. So first off, some of the boards were too thin. You need a medium thickness board and that's for durability because um, some of the thinner boards warped after washing. Mie washed these things 50 times in the dishwasher, which is a lot, but um, it's really important in this testing because we did see some warping and you wanna make sure that your cutting board stays completely flush with the countertop because once you have warping, then you have rocking and that is not a comfortable surface to cut on if it's moving and you don't feel secure and stable. Another important thing was grippiness. Another thing that will make it a pain to cut on is if the board feels like it's slipping and sliding around and you can use a gripper mat underneath. You can also use a wet paper towel, but if you don't have to, that's even better. You can see these red parts here. They're tackier, grippier material. It makes it sit right on the countertop. I'm really trying to push this here and I can't. So that was awesome. Some of the boards we tested were a little over-designed. One came with two parts. You know, it was supposed to help with grippiness, but we didn't like that. We just want to deal with one piece. We liked this little handle here, but beyond that, we preferred boards that just kept it simple. Okay, so one of our tests we did was to chop up bunches of parsley. Um, we do this test for all of our knife testing, our cutting board testing, and we choose it specifically because of the way you need to cut parsley. Um, it's a slightly different motion. You know, you're really rocking your knife on the board and that um, there's a lot of movement there. And so we can look at, is the board sliding around? Is it staying in place? You'll see right now the board is not budging one bit. I'm rocking my knife back and forth. Some of the other boards, that motion, that rocking, chopping motion, the board would scoot when you moved your knife forward. The best thing you can say about a cutting board is when you forget that you're on one, and this cutting board does that. So another element of our durability testing was staining and odor retention. Um, this is important for all cutting boards, wooden and plastic. You cut something stinky on it or something very vibrantly colored, you don't want your cutting board to smell bad or be stained for um, the rest of its lifetime. We were particularly interested um, in the staining test with the plastic boards because if you've ever uh, stored chili in a Tupperware container, you know that plastic can definitely hold on to smells, it can stain really readily, so we were curious to see how the boards would do in this test. So all of the boards, interestingly enough, fared pretty well in this testing. Um, they didn't always come clean right away. Sometimes it took a couple washes for them to come clean. Um, but our favorite boards cleaned up slightly easier. Our winner here stained after the first wash. One more wash and it was fine. All right, so our cutting board is nice and messy. I'm gonna take peppers off and try to clean it. As you can see, super clean, nice and white again, really easy. Yes, in case you're wondering, we do smell checks at all of these. It's part of the job. Hmm, smells beautiful. No staining or odor retention. The wood versus plastic cutting boards, I am in the wood camp. I think they're wonderful surfaces to cut on. They look beautiful. They last forever as long as you do a little bit of maintenance and basically they're just so much more rewarding. I don't put things as big as cutting boards in my dishwasher anyway, so I would be hand washing either board, and so I don't mind washing a wood board. It's heavy, it's durable, and it's beautiful. I would think of a plastic cutting board as the slightly easier option. Um, they're typically a little lighter, a little easier to maneuver, which means they're easier to clean. They're not um, something you'd want to put a, a cheese board on necessarily, but they're easier to use. We have a great winner here. We have a great winner in the wooden category, so you really need to think about what style of cutting board 
is right for your lifestyle. And like Lisa said, they're both sanitary. That's a really important thing. Hot, soapy water and you're good to go. You just have to think about usability, I think. Plastic's a little easier, wood requires a little maintenance, and they're both a good option. I have to agree. So for more information on all the products we mentioned and all the testing we did, check out the links below. Yep, and let us know any of your cutting board questions in the comments and make sure to hit that subscribe button.